Hello everyone, this is Bobby Barr speaking and this is a short training video on how to grow your business. We're going to concentrate on ways that you can grow your business. Now most big businesses, and we're going to focus on uh, two or three right now to give you an example, uh, always have what's called a mission statement. Uh, what they want to achieve in their business and it generally starts around customers because customers, without customers, you don't have any business. And once you get your customer, the key then is to retain that customer and grow with them. Understand what their needs are and try and cater as best you can for those needs. And if your customer starts off tentatively spending a small amount of money with you as a business, then how can you encourage that customer to spend more with you. And the key is, is to look after that customer, give them good customer ex uh, service and experience, and they will become not just a customer, but lifelong friends. So let's go. The reason I've done this video is because I was listening to uh, Jeff Bezos from Amazon, absolute huge company, um, you know, huge e-commerce company now. So I want to just go through some of the things that he and other companies use as their mission statement and see if it can give you some inspiration as a business if you haven't already created your mission statement. Because once you have that, you know where your starting point is and then you know where you want to get to. And then it's just a, a question of being focused and driven and ensuring that you can be the best you possibly can in your industry. And generally around every business, industry there is lots of competitors and the key is not necessarily doing what everyone else is doing but you have to find a way to stand out from the crowd and ensure that people come to you and when they come to you they know they're going to have a good experience they're going to get looked after and ultimately they're going to get good products serve and or services whatever it is that you offer as a business and then you can start to move forward and form and build a relationship so what I've just done here is I've put in Amazon's mission as a, as a guide and as, as a business, you can go and check other large companies to give you that might be in your kind of industry uh, that can give you a little bit of inspiration in how to craft, how to create your own mission statement. So Amazon are very focused around the customer to the point of being obsessed. And Jeff Bezos makes the comment that you know they are obsessed with providing a customer experience um, and they want to become a missionary with their mission statement because they believe that missionaries provide better services and better products in other words you know where you where you're starting and you know what you want to achieve at the end of it and there's been lots of ups and downs in amazon from the start uh, right up to now, you know, in, in at the end of 2020, just about to go into 2021. Um, and they've grown exponentially in such a way, all because they give a good customer experience. If you order something by a certain time today, you can receive it tomorrow with their prime delivery service. And they're always looking at ways to keep the customer with them. Um, and e-commerce is a big uh, thing around what Amazon do. So again, when you're crafting your mission statement, again, e-commerce is going to be huge in the future. And the likes of Amazon use what's called the one-click checkout. So once you purchase with Amazon, you know, Facebook do it, other, other people do it as well, e eBay and things like that. They store your credit card details on a, a secure server. They're quite safe. And then the next time that you want to buy from them, they've already got your details. So they just say, purchase here. Once you go to your store to check out and you've bought something, you put it in your basket, you go to your store to check out and boom, one click and it's there. They've got all your details and you just need to tell them with a click of a, a button uh, where you need to, to your parcel or, or, or whatever product that you've bought from them, you need it delivering to a certain address. So is e-commerce something that you can add into your business? If, it's, if it is, great. And if it's not, no, no problem. Not everybody can. 
But if you can attract your customers away from your business hours and you have e-commerce, you know, the, the key is, is to try and keep the customer hot. And whilst you've got a customer that's hot, they're in what's called buying mode and they're likely to buy. So if you have an e-commerce um, you know, solution on your, uh, or with your business on your website or on your social media platforms, wherever it is somebody finds you and they can then go and purchase from you, you've caught them in that, what you call a hot moment, the light bulb moment where they've gone, they want to buy something and bang, they've done it and it's, and, and it's there. And if you, everybody will have experienced with Google and other um, platforms that once you look to buy something, you will find that they've got cookies in the background and tracking um, solutions that they track your move are the kind of things that you want to shop for. So if you've looked at a, a brand new bed, for example, you'll find that, that next time you go online, there will be beds popping up in front of you. And that's because it's all about understanding their customer, tracking them and making sure that product is in front of them and ensuring or trying to ensure that you buy from them. So let's look at the mission statement of Amazon. So our mission is to continually raise the bar of the customer experience by using the internet and technology to help customers find, discover, and buy anything and empower businesses and content creators to maximize their success. And we aim to be Earth's, big statement, most customer-centric company. Now, centric means central. Amazon wants to be central to every single customer that ever comes to them. So they don't want them going off somewhere else to buy something. They want to keep them with Amazon. And that's what, you know, it's their hub and their, they use the word centric. And if we open up another browser and we Google centric meaning, it just gives you a little bit of an idea as to what it's meaning. So in or at the center, central, um, you know, Maybe not the second one, but the adjective in or at the center, central, centric and peripheral forces. So they want to be in the moment, the center of everything, like you see here on this particular, the A is there and they want everything to be central around them as, as these diagrams here are showing. And they want to be central around them as a business. And Jeff Bezos has gone as far as when they've started out that they've never made money on any kind of product for at least five to seven years when they started to launch new products. Now, Amazon have got huge financial backings that, that you know, they're very um, well averse in that area. They're a very healthy, financially healthy company. And for a starter company, that may not be possible. Um, you know, if you're a, a local business, for example, that is just not possible to go five to seven years without earning any money. So the key here is, is to craft something, understand where your starting point is, understand what you want to achieve, and then understand what the outcome is. And in some cases, Jeff Bezos makes the point that they're not really that bothered whether they make money on some of their products as long as they give the customer experience. They give the customer what they want. And eventually they'll try and raise the bar, raise the money in that product, sell it for more, you know, a higher price. And if they cannot do that, then they will automatically get rid of that product in their inventory. But what they've done, they've, they've attracted a customer. And if you look at, 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 at marketing, you have to pay money to market to attract people. And they're looking at, looking at that as it, that's their marketing. It's a marketing budget that they're willing to allow to get people as their customer. And then once they get them, it's their aim, their mission to keep them and make them the obsession to their business and pro provide them with the best quality product that they could ever want and ever wish for and let Amazon be the number one, as we've already said. So let's go through some other things that we can go through about Amazon. So what are Amazon's core values? Again, this is something that all businesses 
uh, need to create if they possibly can. Again, local businesses, if you're, uh, you know, like a hairdresser, for example, the, you want people to come to you and you want to make sure that you're warm, you're friendly when you meet people and you sit down, you're chatty, you learn about that, your customer and you give them great service and you, you cut their hair, whatever it is that you do, whether you color it, cut it, blow dry it, whatever it is, you make sure that that customer has enjoyed their experience with you. And, you know, once they do that, they're going to tell their friends. And that's the key. When people have a good experience, when you look after a customer, they can be your sales team or part of your sales team because they will tell 10 people, you know. And But the, the, the downside is if you don't give them a good customer experience, they'll also give 10 people bad reviews about you. So it's going to be very difficult to build an audience. So here are Amazon's core values, leadership principles. So whoever's at the head of the business, it's creating leadership. And here we go back there, customer obsession. It's what they focus on. Again, without customers, you don't have a business. You, don't, you cannot create sales. You cannot invoice. People cannot buy without if they're not a customer. Leaders start with the customer and work backwards. So for me, that's like reverse engineering things. And that's something that I like to do and, and things that I've done in my past when I've always reverse engineered things and then started and moved forward from there. And it's one of the things that, you know, I'm fortunate in that it's been quite successful for me in my time. Ownership. Leaders are owners. And, you know, if, if, if you're not a, a leader as an owner, then maybe you need to get somebody into your business that is somebody that can make them decisions or has the experience that you may not have if you've found yourself uh, in a business that you don't have any experience in. And that can happen. You need to invent and simplify. Invent things within your business that makes you stand out from your competitors. Again, to service the customer. And not just the customers that you've got, but customers that you're going to get in, in your various ways that you're going to attract them, you know, organically, marketing, whatever it is that you're going to do. Again, we'll, we'll look at that, at that in other videos. Uh, customers are always right. How many times? A lot. How many times have you heard that? You know, if, if you're having arguments with your customers or things are not right, there's not clarity in the service that you're providing, the likelihood is they're going to be looking for somebody else to service them. And that is, you know, that is not helping you as a business owner uh, to grow your business. And it's so important that you, you, you look at that. Um, learn. Running a business, owning a business is always a learning process. And be curious. Never stick to the same path all the time. Be curious. Now, one uh, piece of advice that I would give, and again, uh, Jeff Bezos uh, e echoes this, don't worry too much about what your competitors are doing. Understand what they're doing, but don't worry. You need to be unique in your own business so that you stand out. If you're watching somebody else and trying to copy what they're doing, then that's not going to work. So you need to you know, look at things that somebody does it in a certain way and you think, mm, I can do it in a different way. And that will make me unique within my industry and do that. So understand what they do. Don't be uh, obsessed or, or, or keep checking to see what your competitor does because that's just a waste of your time. It's all about what you do as a business. So focus your time and strengths on making sure that your business is right so that you can grow naturally, organically in the right way and you know, in, in time overtake people. That's because that you're providing all of the right customer experiences the right customer service and you're making your customer happy. You're making your customer smile and that's all customers want. And when you can do that, that's a customer for life. Hire and develop the best. Again, new businesses are going to uh, you know, be a little bit more hands-on when it comes to things like this because they may not have the budget. A medium-sized company and a, and a large company are going into corporate type companies they can hire the best and they will use recruitment companies and they'll pay a lot of money to try and secure the best talent that's out there. But if you're just starting your business from scratch and you don't have a lot of money, 
then you have to uh, be, you have to be the person. So you know, you're, in other words, you're hiring yourself to be the best person to drive that business forward. And then as you as you grow and you start to make some money, you can then allocate a budget into maybe bringing other people on board. So the, you know, if you're new and you're a startup, baby steps are needed. Understand what your business is about. Create that vision statement. Uh, where you start from and where you want to be and set off on your journey and make your, your customer central to that, in, you know, to retain them. And then it, that means that you're not always having to be out marketing constantly for new business. Once you get a customer, look after them and you will get good retention from that customer. And then how can you get a little bit more money out of them? So create that mission statement and keep it focused and central to your business. Insist on the highest standards. So if you don't have the highest standards against a competitor and they have higher standards, people will notice it. And, you know, it's so easy that when people do notice that, that, you know, they will then move to somebody else. So for example, if Coca-Cola um, are doing an offer on 24 cans of Coke, and it's a special offer that they're doing to try and attract new business. And they do it at a similar price to 24 cans of, of, of a brand that is not very well known. Um, guaranteed, they're going to buy Coca-Cola. Again, Heinz Baked Beans would be another one. If, if Heinz Baked Beans do an offer and it's sat on a shelf next to a, a brand that is maybe not as well known, and it's a similar price, even just slightly higher, people will buy Heinz Beans because it's a brand, they've created that brand. And you have to do that as a business, depending on, on where you are in your stage of, of growth as a startup, a medium size, or even a, you know, a, a large company. And the larger that you get, the harder it is because people tend to then sit back on their laurels a little bit because the company's doing okay uh, and you don't necessarily see things. And that leadership quality is needed to be able to spot those things and keep everyone in check and keep on the growth path and ensuring that customers are being looked after. In, in, in a medium-sized company, you know, people are still very hands-on and driven and, uh, and, and switched on. And, and they, and they kind of know there's a bit of competition there um, to, you know, that you can create amongst employees, your workforce, to keep driving the business forward. But at the startup stage, it's generally the owner of the business that is... Is, is, is wearing the hat of many, many people to get to that level to then bring others in. This is a big one, guys, an absolute huge one, is think big. Never underestimate yourself, your product, or your service, whatever it is that you do. And again, when you think about your mission statement in how you're going to apply it to your business, you know, make it different to everybody else so it's unique and make it big make everybody know that it's big make everybody know why you are unique and then shout from the rooftops because if you don't do that you're not going to attract people and be confident and un understand once you do start on your journey when you get that mission statement and your vision and your plan and you start to implement then you can, you know, un understand when you get a customer, what you're going to do to ensure that you retain them and look after them. So again, all key things and Amazon, one of the biggest companies around at the moment. So it's, it's a way of getting some, um, you know, some, some vision yourself, some inspiration from a large company and see how you can create your mission statement. But let's look at two more quickly uh, before, be, be, before we finish. So, if we, Coca-Cola, there's one that I've mentioned. So let's have a look at Coca-Cola. What's the vision of Coca-Cola? So Coca-Cola's vision statement is inspiring each other to be the best we can by providing a great place to work. The purpose of Coca-Cola is reflected in this mission statement. It reveals the intent of the company to be an agent of change and development within its industry and beyond. Now, looking at Coca-Cola's, uh, their... Uh, uh, mission statement, if you, if, if you look at it, is a great place to work. So that means that they're looking to look after their employees. Um, and remember, Richard Branson makes a huge statement is that if you look after your employees, 
your employees will look after your customer, so you don't need to do. Uh, and this is, is probably something similar from what they've said. So Amazon, focusing on the customer, um, number one, obsessed with the customer. But what Coca-Cola are still concerned about the customer, but they're doing it in a different way. So they're making sure that they create a great workplace, that people are happy to then create and churn out a fantastic product that makes their customers happy, whether that be in their marketing, in their procurement of ingredients, or whether that's on their shop floor uh, where they make the product. And a little bit different, but still the same outcome, just a different step to get to the same outcome. Whereas Amazon, um, have, have, have made it absolute focus on the customer. And we've heard stories about people where, you know, they're dying to go to the toilet and, and they can't go to the toilet um, when they're working in an Amazon warehouse because their focus is solely on the customer. And you have to find what's best for you. Facebook's mission, mission state, status and vision is to give people the power to build a community. So Facebook's all around a community you know, be able to communicate with friends, be able to communicate with people outside of your friends network, whether it be in business or even in, in other things that you have interest in, whether it's health and wellness and other types of thing where you can, you can go and you can access a community quite quickly and start engaging, make new friends and everything else. Um, and bring the world closer together. Vision. People use Facebook to stay connected with friends and family to discover what is going on in the world and to share and express what matters to them. And in some cases, it is quite common that people use Facebook to nosy because it helps you to nosy on other people, i.e. friends, family, um, you know, other people within your community or even businesses from a business perspective. So Another one that I want to show is, 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 is Google before we bring this to an end. It might be here. Um, anyway, let's put it here. So Google mission statement. So our company mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. That's why search makes it easy to discover a broad range of information from a wide variety of sources. And I'll cover that, why that's important in how you can grow your business through marketing in another video. Uh, but again, if you look at um, Google, let me break it down. So they're looking to organize. So again, they're looking to be central um, around information and, and being the largest search engine in the, in the world. Again, that's and, and they've got there over time, that's their focus. And you know they're universal, which means they're all over the world. It's accessible and it's useful. And there are other competitors out there, such as Yahoo, such as Bing, such as DuckDuckGo, for example. Um, and I'm sure in the future more will come. And uh, Google will probably be in a position where you know they'll have be able to fight most people off, but are people eventually going to offer something that Google do not? Let's see. Again, competition is healthy. And, you know, people do be top of the tree, but they're there on a perch to be knocked off by somebody that's creative, that's coming along, you know, and, and offers something different. So there is the vision and uh, the mission statements from some very, very large companies. So as a business, in order to grow your business, and if you haven't created a mission statement, then you, you maybe don't have a plan in place of how you're going to put yourself in your market and create and think big and make you stand out from everybody else so that people can see you. So at the minute, you may be you know, below the radar, which means that certain people are going to overlook you. You need to change that and get above, above the parapet, guys. Sing from the rooftops, think big, make and, and, and create something unique about your business that nobody else is doing and then start to push that forward. And that comes with your mission statement about your values and how you can move forward. So thank you for your time. I hope this has been informative and useful for you. If you'd like to work with me below this video, there will be um, a link that will take you through to either um, 
you know, subscribe to my newsletter or to get in contact and have a, uh, an appointment on my calendar. And I hope we can do some um, good with many companies that may get to see this in the future. So I will see you on the next training video. Thank you and have a great day.